Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do some advanced linking of uh, parameters, I guess. Uh, but the main point of this is to show you how to do side chaining of base. Now we're going to use Vanguard for this. You can use absolutely anything though. All you need is something with a consistent um, sound, so something that's sustained that doesn't decay very much. But the problem is, is that lots of synths don't have that. So I'm going to show you how to modify Vanguard to do that. So uh, I started out with a simple bass line here, and and to show that you really can do this with anything in Vanguard, I'm going to use this synth with it. Really isn't ideal. So the first thing is that obviously it's way too high. So we're going to drag the semitone knobs down. Uh, I'm going to to just a full semitone on all of them, or a full tone, which or a full octave, which is eight, 12 semitones. So drag all that down. Now I need to get rid of the plucks out. So make sure that in Vanguard at least, or with most synths, because they have the envelope knobs. Make sure that your attacks are all down. Your decay is about mid. I think that's about 500 milliseconds. Uh, the sustain should be full because you don't want the uh, actual synth to decay at all, and you want the release to be nothing, because if it isn't, then you're going to have overlap over the synth. Uh, I can demonstrate that, but I'm not going to. Uh, now that we've done that, we're going to see that it's a lot more bass -like. Obviously it's a little loud, so I'll drag the cutoff down a little bit, and uh, the delay is making it so that there's overlap between the notes, which is causing a little bit of feedback, and it doesn't sound very good. So, uh, otherwise, make sure that everything's like this, so you turn this into something that's basically, there's no envelope at all, there's just a filter and the saw, which is not very exciting, but it'll sound much more exciting once we get into this. So, we're not actually going to use the kicks to sidechain this, we're going to use fruit, Fruity Kick because it's consistent at least. I mean, I could use one sample, but you might not have that sample, so using Fruity Kick makes it so that we can use whatever we want. Um, I found the best settings for this were turning the first four knobs down to zero, so just do that. And now uh, I'm going to make a pattern that's the same as the kick. I'm going to call it sidechain. And you can hear what this kick sounds like. And as you can see, it's not very loud. Uh, there's not much sound to it. But the point is, is that it's the volume envelope because that's what we're going to use to actually sidechain the bass to using Fruity Peak Controller. So grab, send it to a mixer track, put a Peak Controller on it, and this will automatically mute it. If you're putting it on an actual kick, make sure that you uh, disable this mute. So now when we play this pattern, you can see that the Peak Controller goes up and down, which is good. So what we can do is we can link parameters to this peak controller now. Any parameter that you can do just linking an automation clip, you just go down, click link to controller, and go to internal controller, and we're going to go to our peak controller, and you can do peak or peak and alpha, but we're just going to do peak for now. And this is the mapping formula. So as you can see, this is one-to-one, -one, so for every bit of the peak, it goes up that same amount. But unfortunately for sidechain, this doesn't work very well, because as you notice, this isn't even one-to-one, -one. sort of wonky how they did this, so the default value is actually 0 0.8 because it's 80%, which corresponds to 100% 100 100, uh, percent volume, and you can go up to 125. So we're going to do 0 0.8 minus, and I found that the best multiplier was 6, so we're going to do 6 times input. This means that as the uh, formula goes up, then the volume drops. So if the volume's high, there's no volume, and if it's really low, then it comes up just a little bit. So this works pretty well if you do it like that. So click accept there, and go over to your peak controller, because if I play this out, you can hear that it still sounds kind of weird. And that's because our peak controller it's has a really fast attack and a really quick decay. And that's, I did it that way on purpose, and that's that what you have to do is if you play it and then drag the uh, decay speed down, what you're doing is you're taking this peak and you're making it stay for longer. So if we start it high so that you can see what's going on.
there you go. And so that's as easy as side chaining a base is. Now, if you want to do something a little more complicated than this, let's say that you want to control this side chain. So what you're going to need to use then is you're going to need to use a formula controller. So first thing I'm going to do is reset the link. And just go reset. Easy peasy. Now go over and make a formula controller. It doesn't matter what uh, channel you put it on, because you're going to be able to link to it anyway. So I'm just going to call the side chain formula. If I could spell it properly, there. Now, what we have here is if I show the meter, uh, this is our default formula. So if you see, if I increase A, it goes up. If I increase B, it goes up. If I increase C, that's because it's A plus B plus C. So it's the sum of the three knobs. Now we're going to change this formula to something that's similar to the last one 0 0.8 minus A, or 6 times A times B. So this is the same as the old part, um, but what we have is a second multiplier here, which will allow us to change what the value is. So here's our meter, we have it just right up, and if I play the side chain, you'll see that nothing's happening. That's because the B knob is at 0. But if I increase B, we should see, I think, something's going wrong here. Oh, of course. Linked controller, and of course we have to link it to our peak first. I'm messing up here. And just do this as the default input. So now, when we decrease B, you can see that the side chain gets less and less until it disappears completely, and if you increase it all the way, then it's the maximum. So if we link this B to an automation clip, we can actually control the side chain volume. So now, here's our final effect. If I just play the song... I'm, I'm keep stepping steps here. Um, we of course have to relink our. Uh, there we go out. We of course have to link our volume back to the formula controller. So finally, so there you have it. It's as easy as that. I'm going to load another example here so you can see how this is used in a little bit more complicated way and then I'll get back to you. Hi again. Now I'm going to have to do this quickly because I don't have much time left. So what you see here underneath this green clip is the actual multiplier envelope. This is our C value. Our, yes, this is our C value. Uh, the B value is linked to an actual side chain, which is... Uh, where is it? Here. And then what I've also done is linked it to the a different kick, which is my actual kick, and that's to stop it from over or um, that's to stop the volume from getting too high with the bass. So this is on my bass, which is actually happening, and you should be able to see uh, how this actually changes throughout the song. Uh, I'm just going to do a little clip here because I don't have much time left, so we'll see how long we can get in this. Alright, so thanks for watching, comment, review, do whatever you please. Have fun.